Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, here. Net. And shared. Net. Shared. Net. This call is being recorded. All right. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. I'm coming um, this, this weekend from Dallas, Texas, um, in particular the area called McKinney, Texas, and i um, here with my older brother and uh, even got Pastor Paul here. And uh, we're getting ready to celebrate Family and Friends Day here in McKinney, Texas. Amen. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We realize and recognize that you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We realize and recognize, dear Lord, that you're God and you're God all by yourself. You're an awesome, wonderful, marvelous, and magnificent God. And we worship you this day in spirit and in truth because that's how you want us to worship you, God. And we come in faith because we want to please you, O oh God. So we just ask you this day, dear Lord, to just have your way with us as we come together on this conference call and on Facebook. Dear Lord, bless everyone that is on this line. We plead the blood of Jesus for those that are listening now or going to listen in the future. We plead the blood over their lives, Lord, because we know that there is power in the blood of Jesus. And that power, has the, the power of his blood has never, never, the blood has never lost its power, God. It has the power to save. It has the power to deliver. It has the power to set free. It has the power to strengthen and give those who are mourning to give them joy. So we thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you and we praise you. Now, Lord, bless. Bless us. Be with us right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And so our lesson today, our lesson today comes from um, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel uh, verses 1 through 6, uh, verses 8 through 10, and 12 through 16. And I'm just going to read those selected verses as opposed to reading um, from 1 to 16, but it's just some selected verses. And I'm going to read from a King James version of the Bible. Um, so this is Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 7, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass that when the king sat in his house and the Lord had gave him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant dwells within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and 
Tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, shall thou build me a house for, my, for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Now go down to verse 8 of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8. Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Verse 9, And I was with thee whithersoever thou winnest, and, and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight, and, made, and have made thee a great name. Oh, hallelujah. Liken unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in, a, in the place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And when the days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy father. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the truth of his kingdom or the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, verse 14, verse 14 says, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquities, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put who I put away before thee, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. What a word. What a word. Hallelujah. This is the covenant that God made with David. God's covenant with David. Our memory verse is verse 16 of 2 Samuel chapter 7. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Oh, hallelujah. The key concept of this, of this lesson is God made a special promise to David. For the children, the message is real simple. Number one, David wanted to build a special place of worship for God. Number two, God had other plans for David. <laughs> Hallelujah. And number three, God promised David that his kingdom would last forever. It isn't it strange that when we want to do something, we have it in our heart and mind to do, but God has other plans. That's what that says. But his plans are so much better because his plans come with his promise. And his promise is always kept. Glory, hallelujah. That, that's just wonderful to know that. And so when we get deep into this lesson, we're going to look at these lesson facts. We're going to summarize the key points of God's covenant uh, promise to David. And then the biblical principle is to explain how Jesus brings that promise to his ultimate uh, fulfillment. And then our daily application that we want to take from this lesson is to express a personal desire to serve God and be 
open to his plan. Hallelujah. So we're going to break this lesson down into three parts. Plan denied, past described, and promise defined. Let me give you those again. Plan denied, past described, promise defined. Okay. So let's get down into this lesson. Uh, we got two people in here that, you know, other than God that is, that, that is in the midst of this. And one is David and the other one is Nathan. Is, is Nathan. Okay. And, and King David, we, we know that King David uh, started off in the, in the, in the fields as a sheep herder for, for his father. And, and then uh, he got called out uh, um, by Samuel to be anointed king because the previous king, King Saul, had, 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 had just sinned and, and God removed his anointing off of him. And King David, I mean, David at that time wasn't king, but he had to go fight a big old giant named Goliath. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, all of us have giants in our lives that we have to go and fight. And he went and fought that giant and defeated him and, and, and gained renowned fame. Uh, prior to that, like I said, old Samuel came to Jesse's house and anointed him to be the next king. And so it went on and on. And eventually, this is a time where David is now old. And in, in David's older age now, he's thinking about his legacy. He's thinking about what he's going to leave behind. That's that's how that's 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 how we are when we get a little older, we start thinking about our legacy. But prior to his him thinking about his legacy, we all know that David got into some really bad trouble. He 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 uh fell in love with Bathsheba and got her husband Uriah killed on the front lines of the battle and he had to pay a great cost for that. And 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 uh he, he, he confessed his sins as he did, as we see in Psalm 55, 51 and all of that, and he was forgiven. But now he's at a point where in that legacy uh, of his life, he's trying to, 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 to see what he's going to do and leave forward. And, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Then we have Nathan, Nathan the prophet, David's friend. And Nathan, you remember, was the one that came to him and told him, that he had sinned when he killed, uh, or had uh, um, Uriah killed. And so David and Nathan had a very close relationship. They, uh, Nathan would go and talk to God and then tell David what was going on. And so this, this, this Nathan was a, was a sure, sound prophet. And, and, and the, the, the wonderful thing about him being a prophet to the king was, he was also the king's friend and, and his counselor. So when he came and dealt with David, he dealt with him and gave him good, friendly, godly, friendly advice. Hallelujah. And so that, that's what we are in this scripture. Now, 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 those are the two characters. Now, in the background of all of this, David then, then fought all the battles and, and this text starts off with verse 1, and verse 1 says, When De King David was settled in his palace, the Lord gave him rest from all of the surrounding enemies. He was a man of battle, but now he has rest. His enemies have all been defeated. He was renowned at this point. And so he, he, he didn't have to worry about the, the, the fight anymore. And, and that's, that's a wonderful thing to get to the point in life where you have all your enemies under your feet. And, and, and so now he's thinking, well, Lord, what, what I want to do for you. And so listen to verses one through six again, but this time from the new living translation. When David, King David, was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the Ark of the Covenant is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, go ahead and do whatever you have in mind. 
for the Lord is with you. But the same night, the Lord said to Nathan, go and tell my servant, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt unto this very day. I have always moved from one place to another with a tent and uh, with a tent and a tabernacle as my dwelling. So David's plan was to build God a house. He wanted to build the temple of the Most High God. He had in his mind this great idea to build God a palace, to build God a tabernacle, to build God a temple, a place where everybody could come and worship. David had in his mind that this is what he was about to do. But God, God had other plans. So when David called in Nathan, Nathan told him, say, you, you're going to do whatever's on your heart. I, I, I want you to do whatever's on your heart. And, and, and he said, okay, okay. But then Nathan went home and talked to God. He had a conversation with God. And God told him at that point, David, David, you're not the one. I ain't never really asked for a house. I had never really asked for anybody. I've been dwelling in tents and tabernacles, traveling with the children of Israel for all these years since they came out of the land of Egypt. But that ain't, I, I didn't want this. And so David was, 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 I guess he had great plans, but God had other plans, if you will. And, 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 and God in this text does not de de divulge to us all the reasons David uh, wouldn't can't be the one to build the temple. But we look over in maybe uh, first Corinthians or first Chronicles, excuse me, chapter 28, verses two and three. Um, it, it talks about the David desiring to build. Uh, um, but but. The thing is, is that he was a man of war and he had blood on his hands. And so with that blood on his hands, God didn't want him to be the one to build his temple. So, so, so that was some of the possible reasons why God didn't want him to do it. But, but God had other plans. That's the main thing. You know, we can say, well, well, God didn't do it because he got blood on hands and people go around and say, well, you got blood on hands, you can't do stuff for God. No, it's, it's God had other plans. And and his other plans were, and I and we can mention it here, He and we're, we're going to talk about it here in a second, so I, I'll go with, go with that. So, so, so God's plan, I mean, God denied him the plan, but now God was going to show him his great plan. But before he could show him his great plan, he had to talk about the past. And so listen, listen, listen to the text, verses um, uh, 8 through 10. He says, now go and say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of heaven's army has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people. I have been with you wherever you have gone. I have destroyed all of your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who's, who has ever lived on the earth. And I will provide a homeland for my people Israel planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they have done in the past. God is saying, look here, David, I know who you are. I know where I brought you from. I brought you from being a ruddy little old boy, uh, herding sheep to making you the great leader of the children of Israel, making you King David. 
I done been with you every step of the way. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we can never forget where we come from and we can never, ever forget how God has brought us out of it. And I, I have to sit back and think about, oh, Lord, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, you know, one of them songs come to my mind. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe am i it was love that lifted me no see, see you gotta understand it was the, the love of god that took david and brought him to where he is now and not only this did, did, did god do this for david he did it for the children of israel his chosen people and he has a desire now he says look I, i'm i'm gonna take them to the place where i promised them the, that that land flowing with milk and honey and i'm going to protect them and i'm going to keep them and i'm going to establish them on the earth but not only am i doing this for them i'm doing this also for you you're gonna have a name everybody knows king david even today, we know King David. Oh, hallelujah. So, so that's, that, that was the past described. And, and he described how, how where David came from. He, he described basically how he has gonna, he's taking care of the children of Israel. And now he's how he's going to plant them in the future. Oh, we need to know our history. Because if you think about where your parents have been and where God has brought your parents from and brought your grandparents from and brought your great grandparents from, you know, uh, 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 we, we've all, we've all came from a very, very, very speckled past, if you will. And God has brought us a mighty long way. It may not be where we want it to be right now. Oh no, 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 no. But we got to appreciate and be grateful for where we are right now. So now let's get to our final point. Our final point tonight, uh, this morning, is promise defined. So listen to verses 12 through 16 again from the New Living Translation. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants your offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. Yes, that's it. I'm going to raise up one after you gone. He said, he is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will secure his royal throne forever. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 14, I will be his father and he will be my son. And if he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from your sight. And then he says, your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time and your throne will be secured forever. And so, who is God talking about here? He says, David, after you dead and gone, after you came home to be with me, after you been buried with your ancestors, ready to take a rest, I'm going to make your offspring strong. Who was his offspring? King Solomon. Oh, hallelujah. And he says, he's going to be the one who will build a house for me. He will build a temple for my name. And we know that Solomon's temple was, oh, man, it was a raw temple and beautiful temple. And that, that you know, that, that's awesome. And then he says, I will secure his royal throne forever. Then he made another promise. He said, now. I will be his father and he will be my son. Oh, that's awesome. But he says this, if he sins, I will correct and discipline him 
with the rod like any father would do. Oh, hallelujah. It's such a blessing to have a father in your life that will discipline you, not because he's mad at you, but because he wants to correct you and show you the right way. And so sometimes we have to be disciplined. God disciplines those that he loves. And we need to have our heart prepared. He promised that he going to do this to, to, to King Solomon. That's what he promised. But, and he promises that also to us. But now, after he talks about the discipline, look at this next promise. But my favor, oh, hallelujah, the favor of God will not be taken from him. As I took it from Saul when I removed him from your sight, God's favor is for a lifetime. God's favor, his amazing grace, his mercy, his loving kindness, his gentleness, oh, his favor. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your favor, God. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Oh, I don't know about you. But I'm so happy, so glad that I have the favor of God upon my life. Oh, hallelujah. And that, 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 was, that was probably sweet words to David's ear to hear that his descendants will have favor. He going to have the favor of God. And then we get to that verse 16, that final and key verse. He says, your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all times and your throne will be secure. Now, isn't that an awesome plan? Little David, <laughs> that now is King David didn't know that one of his descendants would be Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He had no idea. God had made a promise that his kingdom was going to be established forever and David had no idea God's own son, savior of all who believe in him. Jesus is forever and will forever be the ultimate fulfillment of God's covenant with David. Even before Jesus is born, the angel says to him, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David and his kingdom shall be no end. That's Luke chapter 1 verses 32 through 33. Oh hallelujah. Well this, this is a beautiful lesson dealing with the plans of David being denied and his past being described. But God giving him a promise that was going to last forever. A couple of points I want us to ponder. As the people of God, we should have a genuine concern for the things of God. Two, our plans would be God honoring, but they may not be God's plan. I'm going to say that a different way. We can have a whole lot of plans, but we don't know if they're really God's plans. They could be great plans. They could be godly plans. But we got to make sure they're God's plans. God's plans are in, in infinitely greater than ours. And we can't be God's giving, no matter how we try. God's kingdom is a spiritual one established in Christ for all eternity. And finally, we can be citizens of God's kingdom in Jesus who will rule forever 
and ever and ever. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your promises in your word. Help us, Lord, always to follow your plans because it is you that worketh in us both to will and to do according to your good pleasure. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thought to remember what God builds with us endures. What we build without him does not. Amen. Before we leave this broadcast, we like to pray the prayer of salvation. And we're just going to simply pray. Please pray with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook, you be blessed. We're going to go on the conference call. And um, if you want to call in to the conference number to talk with us about this lesson, that number is 910-218-0531. If you have any comments or questions, 910-218-0531. Goodbye, Facebook. Have a blessed Sunday.